one of these weeks I'd like to do one of these big O shows after a win. Please? What is up, Finn fans? Got a fantastic, fantastic DDW Big O show. Because today we talk about a lot of stuff. Long episode, you could tell. A very long episode. We had a lot to talk about. I actually backtrack, take a step back, look at a situation, and apologize about a, a, a situation and about a player that I was mad about. You're going to have to check this out. But me and Big O take a real deep look into Brian Floyd's, took a deep look into what's going on with the Dolphins, where are they going, where have they come from, a lot of stuff. And a lot of our conversation makes me take a look back at some of the decisions they made. Very, very good conversation. Be sure to check it out. Stay through the whole thing if you can. Again, this will be on the podcast. You can go check it out on the podcast. The podcast is linked on uh, um, very top. It's Dougly Do Wrong. And it's on Spotify because that's all I can get it on right now. I'm trying to get on iTunes and all the other stuff. But without further ado, let's jump into this fantastic episode, this fantastic conversation with Big O. Break down a lot of stuff. Let's jump into it. Man, I wish one of these weeks, just one of these weeks, I think since we started this show, they haven't won. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, we started after the New England game. You're right. You're are right we the are we the jinx? <laughs> no, no, this has been going on for over twenty years. Don't blame fucking us. <laughs> All right, if we were on for for twenty years, then yeah, <laughs> maybe then you can blame us. I would I would have uh, started uh, no. twenty years. I would have started when I was thir- 14. Right, and and I started been- covering the team in the Shula, and you know towards the back end ninety one. So don't blame me either. Okay. <laughs> So, you know, I, I saw so, I covered some good times. I didn't, you know, I, I got to deal with all this crap going on. It's just, you know, I think that I think, you know, what hurts us most, all of us is as Dolphin fans. And I know I got to sit in the media chair and be yeah. the objective one and all that crap. But, you know, I'm not going to BS any of you guys. You know, I'm a Dolphins fan and I want yeah. the Dolphins to win more than anything else. But I think we we all really, you know, a lot of us, I'm not going to say all of us, but I think most of us kind of felt whew, we're finally headed in the right direction. And I think this is what's really walloped us. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because it didn't matter what you were, you know, what you saw from Joe Philbin from one year to another. It didn't really inspire you. Yeah. Or, or you know, rest in peace, Tony Sperano, but it didn't inspire you the love for field goals one year to another. You know what I mean? Wants that running his fingers through his <laughs> hair, you know, it, it's not going to inspire you from one year to another, but Flores did that for us. Yeah. And from the first year to the second year and now going into the third year. And I think that this is where I think a lot of us are really hurt mm-hmm. because we have suffered for so long that we finally thought we were coming out of the abyss. And boy, they have just sucked us right back in again. And it's just, I think, I think that's the thing that hurts us most, more than anything else. And I I made a video, I recorded a video last night, released it yesterday for everyone listening today for us. And I wanted to figure, I tried to figure out what happened. And I think the biggest thing that happened is the jettison of so many experienced veterans. I think that's what the biggest change was. And when it, when Flores and Greer first started doing it in uh, twenty in the beginning of this year in free agency, I was one of them that was like, they took us from five and eleven to ten and six. I'm going to trust them; they know what they're doing. And now, right. in hindsight, I'm looking at it and I'm like, they have no idea what the frick they're doing. No, they don't. No, they don't. And you know, the whole offensive uh, coordinator mess came to light now. Yeah, that you're basically lying about something so silly. I mean, in the end, Flo, you, you're not protecting anybody because it's your ass on the line, dude. Mm-hmm. You're the one that's had three different offensive coordinators, so it doesn't matter who calls the plays and all that. You're 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 so worried about who the media is going to blame. Yep, we're going to blame you, dude. Mm-hmm. You're the one that can't find an offensive coordinator or an offensive line, and you're the one that does all these. You're the one that has this incredibly strained and weird relationship with your own quarterback which is another weird dynamic to this whole thing that I, you know, it's like I've been around a long time and 
every time you think you've seen everything, no, dude, there's something new to, you know, to, to watch, to learn, to, you know, to, you know, kind of take notes and all that. And wow, it's just, it's one thing after another here right now. And that's, and I think that's what hurts all of us. We thought he was a dude in control. Yeah. We thought he pushed all the right buttons, you know, all of that stuff. And this year he has pushed every wrong button you can possibly push. And now your credibility is also shot in the process because now we cannot believe you in anything you say. We understand coach lies. Yeah. Those are normal. Oh, well, you know, he's kind of iffy this week. He may play or not play. We, we understand all of that. But this whole mess with the offensive coordinator, you were lying just to not have to defend the craziness that you were doing. It's not so much about protecting who we were going to rip as an offensive coordinator. In the end, it's you. And by the way, veteran players, veteran coaches, too, you got rid of in Chan Galen. Yeah. And it, like I said, it, it, he, we gave him the benefit of the doubt, but it seems like he has like, he doesn't want He doesn't want any like pushback from his ideas. It seems like that's the thing, whether it's, Oh, we're going to start this person versus this person. And I bet you some of the guys like Kyle Van Noy was probably one of those guys that when they started to a, against the Rams, Kyle Van Noy probably went to Brian Flores and was like, why are you doing this? Like, why don't you stick with Fitz? He, he's who we want right now. The kid's not ready. And he probably was like, oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And then he probably looked at Greer and said, we're getting rid of him next year because I don't need players coming to me telling me how to do my job. Blah, blah, blah. Right. He got rid of Flores, uh, uh, Flowers too. Yep. Cam Flo got rid of Flo uh, Flowers. Guar guaranteed on that. That was, That's not a Greer move either. Mm -mm. The, the GM doesn't tell you, hey, you've got to now coach all young guys on the O-line. The <laughs> coach is the one that said, no, these guys are ready. We can coach them up. You know, I've got a very inexperienced offensive line coach ready to prepare them. It, 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 and that's the biggest thing, because one of the things I talked about is you look at there was three quarterbacks taken in 2020. Joe mm -hmm. Burrow in the first round, essentially. Joe Burrow, Tua Tagovailoa, Justin Herbert. And then you had Jordan Love later on, but that is whatever. You look at those top three quarterbacks and you look at what their organizations did for their quarterback. And then you look at the Dolphins. Right. Like, you you can't, and it's so funny because I'm I'm starting to see this more and more. You can't defend Tua in any aspect without being called a Tua near, Tua stand, a Tua right. lover. Right. But you have to objectively take yourself out of the situation, whether you love or hate the kid. And look at what, like, you could say, oh, what, you mean the Dolphins didn't do anything for Tua? Well, they brought in Charlie Fry, they brought in Waddle, and they drafted how many offensive linemen? But that's not the right thing to do. Because... It doesn't mean, right, it doesn't mean it worked what you were trying to do. You know what I mean? It's like you, you gave them an offensive line coach that isn't experienced with mm -hmm. an offensive line that isn't experienced with an offensive coordinator situation that isn't proven. None of those guys have ever put together an offense. Right. You have unreliable receivers all over the place. The only two guys that are reliable are Gesicki and Waddle. 100%. That's it, dude. There's nobody else. Preston William comes in for one play and he drops the football right away. Get the hell out of here. Devontae Parker can't stay healthy. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've been screaming every week for Matt Collins. Yep. And, and you keep Albert Wilson on the field and on the roster why and here's matt collins again making another play for you how is that guy not your number two seriously how is it not waddle and matt collins and gesicki the top three guys you need football players right now you need people that can be on the field and assist you yep. and you need people that are reliable get matt collins on the damn field more every play i want him out there i want him starting I don't care if he's not the most gifted one out of all of them, but he's got more balls than most and he's durable and reliable and consistent. And he makes plays all over the place. Get him out there on the field. These are the things that drive me crazy. I, me and my Friday. dad were live streaming the game on Sunday and I even pointed it out to him because Mike Kaziki, nice 20 yard catch from Tua marches to the sideline. And my dad goes, why do they keep doing that, Doug? And I right. said, dad, watch this. It's a run play. Very next play, hand the ball off. 
You do these things, and it's such a tell that that's why your run game doesn't work. How about you keep Gazicki out, have Durham Smythe line up in line, have Gazicki be in the slot, still have a three wide receiver set, and then run it out of the pistol. Because then all of a sudden, again, I'm a schmo from New Jersey, and I, why can I see and understand these yeah. things? Right. Yeah. Like it, it both, and they take Jalen Phillips, they keep dropping him back into coverage. They take him out, they bring in Brendan Scarlett. Why don't you just have this guy consistently have him be Jason Taylor consistently put his hand in the ground and get after the quarterback? I, it's the decisions, the horrible tackling, the penalties. Miami Dolphins, right now, 45 penalties on the year, seven games into the year. Last year, 73 penalties, third least in the NFL last year. For the year. For the year. The year. So they're about, tw- what, 28 away oh. from being where they are, yeah. and they're going to hit that before midseason. You're right, right. So yeah. what, Brian Flores, you had one, of, and I said this in my video, they had less time last year. He oh, had I a more that. disciplined, better defense with a month to get ready. He had OTAs, mini camp, training camp, preseason this year. And they're worse. Yeah. Well, but that's because they made it like what we started now when you talked about a lack of leadership. You got rid of Bobby McCain. Mm-hmm. You know? And one of the things I was talking about today, because I, I I was very critical of Minka Fitzpatrick. Yeah. Uh, and his selfishness mm-hmm. and all of that. Okay. So some of you out there may have been critical. Doug, you were critical too. Mm-hmm. All right. Maybe we got to take a step back now and say, you know, maybe we were wrong here. 100%. Maybe Minka's right because Minka was complaining about something and they didn't, they wanted to move him around and he didn't, and he didn't want to sacrifice. Well, I watched Bobby McCain sacrifice. You moved him to safety. He blew out his shoulder for you. How'd you reward him? By cutting his ass. Mm -hmm. So here's Tua sacrificing himself i mean yesterday dude that 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 when he ran for that first down and took on the tackler <laughs> and hurt and him broke the tackle <laughs> and hurt him right exactly and 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 took on the tackler there's a guy there's a guy with a with a surgically repaired hip dude that is doing this and i'm i'm sitting there going here's a kid that half the fan base doesn't want him because the Dolphins have polluted the water the way they treat him mm-hmm. because they've given up on him almost practically since last year almost. Yeah. You know, I mean, the way you kind of treated him. So you already gave up on him. You sent this message out. He's not supported by his coach. He basically came out to the podium yesterday and told you, yeah, they told me that they were trying to trade for Watson. Yep. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, he was honest with me, all that. And, uh, and, and he has to fight all this adversity He has terrible coaching, not a good offensive line, no running game, unreliable receivers, and yet you're asking him to make chicken salad out of chicken, you know what? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so why should he sacrifice? Yeah. And maybe Kyle Van Oy was right, and maybe Minka Fitzpatrick was right. And you watch the way that they treated, you know, Bobby, like I said, which is another veteran yep. that you're missing from this team and the secondary, which desperately needs it. Yep. Because Bobby made sure everybody was in the right place, you know, all of these kind of things. So you start to think about what you said initially, and then you start to think about the way flow. Has, it seems like he is, you know, not flexible. I mean, now, now we start looking back at, uh, the receiver that they got in the, uh, that they shipped out in the Tunsil trade with Bills. the whole Jay Z, right. With the whole Jay Z mess. And then playing he, you know, that song to mess with him. Exactly. So you start to think about all these things now and you start to put it all together. And now in a season where things aren't going well for you, where he could not where he actually had to deal with expectations Mm -hmm. this year, which Flo did not have any. It was, you know, it was a novelty the first two years. Wow. Surprise. They won. Wow. Surprise. (laughs) They're improving this net. Now it's like we put the expectations on them and they're not meeting. There's a lot of stuff that's come to a head now and you have to really look at what's going on. And, and Flo has mishandled a lot of this stuff now. And there's a reason why he's getting these kind of results. And these are the decisions he's made. He's put himself, he's created the mess that he is in right yeah. now. And it's so funny too, that you say that too, because like you said, I was so, I called him, I called Mika Fitzpatrick a baby, 
talk, you know, going to his mom and then going I called to the Minka bitch, Minka bitch was going um, to the Steelers. Like and then at the end of the, the year, the Steelers saying they want me around the ball more. So they're going to move me around the field. That set me off. I'm like, Are you right. kidding me? Too. Yeah. But, but now all of a sudden, like you said, you take a step back and you're like, I bet you, he said, Oh, I'll move around, but I don't want to be training here. Or he probably said something different than we're hearing. Like, I'm not here permanently. I'll help you guys out for a play or two, but. If you think I'm going to be doing this week in and week out, no, no, no. That's not who I am. And Forrest probably didn't like that. Right. And and you know what? And none of us like it, right? Mm-hmm. In a way, we didn't like the way he responded because we figured. And, and you know, I use several people as examples. Jesse Davis plays eight positions. But he's really not Minka Fitzpatrick. No. So, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Jesse will never be Minka in a way that he's not a star yeah. that, like, you're not going to move Jason Taylor and say, well, Jay, you know, we now want you to play defensive tackle. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, no, I'm not doing that. We want to move you to know, the middle linebacker. We want you to – Zach Thomas yeah. is going to go to Dallas. We're going to move you to middle linebacker right now. Right. You know, that kind of shit. And so – yeah, you start to look at all of this, and it's a, it's just a really uncomfortable position. And I just wish none of us were were in this position right now. I just I wish I wish that the season would have gone the way we wanted it to be a good season. But man, this is just everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. Yeah, a hundred percent. And it, and it's it's crazy how, it how we were. Pre- if if Brian Flores would have won one more game, whether it was the Seattle game, whether it was the Denver game, whether it was the first Bills game when there was a lot of dropped interceptions and the Dolphins made the playoffs last year, I honestly think that he wins coach of the year last year. Maybe. maybe. I think him missing the playoffs is what cost him getting coach of the year. And to think he went from that close of that to where he is now, it's such a drastic drop that you like – but nope. anything's possible, my friend, because Butch Davis, who can't win in the Sun, sun Belt or Conference USA and really did nothing at the University of North Carolina, but fans give him so much props at the University of Miami because of the recruiting he did mm-hmm. before Coker took over, which was great. But everybody also remember, Butch Davis was actually coach of the year in the NFL, his rookie year in Cleveland. <laughs> So I do remember know, that actually the sun shines on every dog's ass every once in a while, <laughs> Butch Davis couldn't coach himself out of a paper bag, but he's a good car salesman and you know, it is what it is. So sometimes that happens too, that, uh, things just fall into place for a coach. You know what I mean? And, and with get and with, uh, with flow now, it's just here. The worst part now is how do you salvage this? Yep. How do you fix all of this? Mm-hmm. How do you start to convince your fan base that you actually know what you're doing? Mm-hmm. Because yeah, I'm sure you're getting it like I am. Um, they want the owner to sell the team, which a lot of them don't. I guess a lot of them don't realize that the the ownership has already been passed on. It's already set for when Ross does, you know, check out or whatever. Mm-hmm retire or whatever there's already a guy waiting in the wings Mm -hmm. so there's no selling of the team that's already in place uh they want flow they want greer fired uh you got half the fan base that probably doesn't want to around anymore yeah they're convinced he's the problem which yesterday didn't help (laughs) i it didn't help but it also for me actually personally see i like to measure quarterbacks in chaos Mm mm-hmm and that's all he's been is in a chaotic situation. Mm-hmm. But yesterday he threw two interceptions that cost his team, but then he brought you back four touchdowns. And, yeah. and some people don't, you know, they conveniently, at least the older people seem to forget that Marino had several of those games mm-hmm. where he sucked in the first half threw a bunch of interceptions, whatever down by five, 10, 15, 20. And here he is in the second half adjusting the pants <laughs> and ready to fire and bring you right back. You know what I'm saying? So I loved what I saw from Tua yesterday that he effed up and he did two dumb throws mm-hmm. and he knows that they were dumb. That's what I also love about him. Yep. That he knew that they were terrible, but he brought you back. And to me, that's how you measure a quarterback. The defense can you win the big games? Can you win the big moments? Can you overcome adversity? Those kind of things. 
So actually, Tua in the mess showed me a lot yesterday. And in the last two games, continues to convince my convince me that he's really not the problem. He's just a young quarterback, 12 games in, that is gonna make a few mistakes. Come on. I said that. I that's that's the exact words I said. And I said, unfortunately, Tua does not have the luxury that a normal quarterback should have. No. Normally in this game, you throw two interceptions, you throw four touchdowns. 12 game. Normally, if a quarterback's in 12 games, it's their rookie year. And you say, he's a rookie. He made the mistakes. He'll learn from it. He'll move on. But like I said, Tua is under this microscope, under this magnifying glass right now. He does not have that luxury to say he'll learn because he has this vulture, like I called him. Watson's waiting. Pull the trigger. I'll come up. I'll scoop Tua, take him out. And all of a sudden, I'm your guy. Or not right. even him. Say the Dolphins, say he goes to. Carolina or something at the end of the year you think the Dolphins aren't going to try to get Aaron Rodgers or Russell Wilson yeah so sure. th- he has this cloud above his head so he thinks I need to do more I need to push it I need to do interception intercept but then all of a sudden like you said my biggest thing with Tua and my biggest knock with Tua is his inconsistencies but again he's a 12 game quarterback he's inconsistent he will make throws that you're like that's a nice throw he'll stay in the pocket he'll evade the pressure he'll do Throw, bah, bah, bah. you're like that's nice, and then all of a sudden you're like field when he threw Gesicki yesterday, that was that was beautiful. And the third down, he also fired a Gesicki towards the end of the game. Mm-hmm. Dude, that's a badass throw right there, man. But Come then on, all of a sudden he starts doing throw. he starts doing throws where you're like you had a touchdown, you missed. You throw an interception, you do. Right. So he's up and down, up and but he's a twelve. And what it is is you see, but he's supposed to be up and down. But the thing that hurts him the most is Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert. Because right. they're not doing that. And now all of a sudden everyone's right. like, we could have had that. And we got this. Right. Yeah, but they have better. They have better talent around them where Tua does not, actually. That's the difference. And it looks to me like they probably have better coaches. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Joe okay. Lombardi so, is a very good offensive coordinator. That's what I'm saying. You know, Tua doesn't have a good quarterbacks coach and he doesn't have a good offensive line coach. and He doesn't have a good offensive coordinator. And so coaching is so important in this league. And right now I have to say that the Chargers are a better coaching staff. Yep. And and it seems like Zach Taylor, the guy that was here with the Dolphins, is doing a better job. Ryan Tannehill's quarterback coach. Yeah. I thought that was going to fall apart. To be honest with you, with Cincinnati, I'm like, they take Jamar Chase. They don't take Panay Sewell. That's going to fall apart. And they are, they just beat the crap out of the Ravens. When was it? And I said this in my video too. When was the last time the Dolphins beat the crap out of the Ravens? We've beat the Ravens. Yeah, I don't think ever. We've never beat the crap. We've never put 40 up on the Ravens. No, never, never. Because they've never been physical enough during the Raven era to match up to them. Like that one year where Raven era is the last 20 years. Yeah. That's the and that's the problem that this is not a the friend this is the this has been their worst time for 20, 25 years. They haven't jo- been a physical team. Joe Flacco's last year that it was that year that we won like by two or something like that. Yeah, was, yeah. Uh, we never. So it's like, so it's, there's, it's always an embarrassment. The Raven game. Oh my actually. god, I'm not looking forward to that Thursday night game either. <laughs> right, yeah. No, definitely. Although, you know, somehow or another they could play like the, the Bengals. That would be nice. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine they beat the Bills and the Ravens, but they then they lose to like the Giants and the Jets. That would be so Dolphins. Yeah. But they have, but even their receiving core is better. Yeah. The Bengals receiving core. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I know you have Jalen Waddle, but that's it. He's not. The Jalen else. Waddle and Jamar Chase are two different types of wide receivers. Oh, yeah. No, no. One's inside, one's outside. Mm-hmm. That's a completely different receiver. But your second best receiver you don't even play and that's hollands we just talked about this you keep playing all these other guys that are unreliable you know what i mean and and again the bengals and the chargers both have better offensive lines at this point i mean he this guy was getting killed and at least now they're actually giving him time to throw the ball you know i mean they know how to scout they go out they pay lindsley whatever he wanted then they right. bring in that great tackle. They know how to – they know what they were doing, whereas the Dolphins, right. on the other hand, think they're smarter than everyone else. But think about that. The Bungles know what they're doing. Mike <laughs> Brown knows what he's doing, and Miami doesn't? 
That's you, bad, dude. Do you know like the nickname that's... that the Dolphins are now? Because they got the Bungles. We're the LOL fans. LOL fans. The LOL fans. <laughs> really? Okay. <laughs> are we at the stage of putting the bags back on our heads? Are we at that stage yet? Pretty close. Pretty close, dude. It's embarrassing. I mean, this week you want to run and hide. I, I don't know. Yeah. I think this week's game is like an R-rated game. I think you're not allowed to bring uh, the women and children to the Buffalo Dolphin game. I'm pretty and sure it's on that, Halloween, so we're going to get to see a horror movie live. Yeah, I think there's <laughs> something about a lot of blood or something. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't think you want to put the women and children in front of the Dolphins Bills game. That's. I mean, those people are. They, they have that pent up frustration oh, from yeah. when the Dolphins beat them for 20 straight years. So all those players get reminded of that all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's it's perpetual, uh, you know, um, payback for them. In That's Buffalo. the way they got to look at it. You know what I mean? It's, you it's think crazy. you think they get put up at least 35 before halftime? <laughs> yeah, I, I think they're good. I think those I think those dudes are like trying to play so hard that they want to like by the middle third. It's like, hey, coach, if we're up by 30 burger, we, we get to rest. Right. You know, that kind of stuff. I think they're all racing to rest in that game pretty yeah. much. It's it's scary to even – now watch the Dolphins win that game, which would be so Dolphins. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I would like love – everything in the world falls into place, and they <laughs> win in Fox – not Foxborough. What's it? Uh, <laughs> Orchard Park or whatever the hell it's called now. I would love for Tua to go back, watch Week 17 last year, and then have – have a great game against Buffalo. I would just love it. Four touchdowns, no interceptions. Just, I'd love for him to come out and have a great game against Buffalo. But unfortunately, he, the thing that drives me nuts, yes, I understand two of the two interceptions that could have at least been a minimum of three points each, which we would have won the game if you look at it that retrospect. Of course. But it's, it's the struggle. It's like, it's the struggle. And then, a lot of people want to look at that and put the microscope on that, but they don't want, we needed one more stop by the defense. Double Kyle Pitts, like stop playing zone. Like it, it, it was little it, it, easy things you could have fixed. And they marched down to the 20 so easily. It looked like the dolphin defense was like, I would just want to go home at this point. I don't even, but it was so dolphins because that's, what's been going on for 20 years. That when the defense makes a stop and then you need the offense to come through, they don't come through. And when the offense comes through and then they need the defense, it doesn't come through. You know what I mean? And even special teams. Now you're getting kicks blocked. And oh my it, God. It's just, it, it, there's nothing. There's not one phase that you're that you're actually satisfied with. Mm -hmm. There's not one coach on the staff that is doing their job. I, I will argue with people this might be the worst coaching staff in 20 years of the Miami Dolphins. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's how bad this – and we're talking about a Cam Cameron staff. This staff might be worse than Cam Cameron's staff. And that's where – that this is the, the – to me, the biggest problem on this team, before I get to personnel mm – -hmm. And I know people want to jam on Greer, and I get it, and mm. and go at it because you have all the ammo. But I I need before I get to Greer, I'm still convinced that the guy that's coaching and the people coaching, they don't know what they're doing, mm -hmm. and they don't know how to maximize what they have. I believe if you had a real coaching staff, you'd have more wins on the table, and the team would be a lot better. Yeah. But that's my problem right now. It's hard to get a feel for Tua because of all the crap around him. It's hard to really. I can't believe that the veterans that aren't playing well and are underperforming and then the young players that aren't playing well and then they're performing. So they're all bad selections. Mm -hmm. Dude, it cannot be that bad. Mm -hmm. There's no way we're going to end up next year watching guys get cut and leave and excel. Yep. Like we're watching flowers and the other guy, the other offensive lineman that I can't pronounce. Both guys are helping out other teams and playing better than our linemen. Jermaine Ilmenora. Il That's it. That's <laughs> it. That's it. I got it. all those guys. Those two guys are helping in other places. Yeah. Next year, mark my words, a bunch of these guys that they let go are going to be helping other teams. And we're going to go, dude, why is it that they don't play well here, but they're playing well somewhere else? Coaching. 
Can I ask you two more things before we get out of here? Mm -hmm. One, obviously everyone, this is the talk of the town now. Next, uh, Tuesday, Tuesday's the big day. Is Deshaun Watson going to be a Miami Dolphin quarterback by Tuesday? It looks like it. Do you think that's smart? Like, do you think they're going to do it to save their no. jobs? Uh, uh, you know, um, I was talking about this today. I don't know what to believe anymore now. Yeah. Because there's a twisted part of me that says, you know, Barry Jackson put out a report that apparently Greer and Flo are safe no matter what happens this year. Okay, so now let me run this by you now, Doug. I want you to think about this. So your front office and a coaching staff that you did not hit on anything. Mm -hmm. Everything is failing. The quarterback is actually not really a total failure, but you're kind of already dissing him and looking for somebody else. So I sit back and I wonder, did they really pick Tua? Or did somebody else pick Tua? Because if you're not normally, I mean, here's my point. And it's not that I want Greer or Flo fired because I have not even said that ever. Yeah. As pissed as I am with Flo, I haven't even said to fire his ass. But, and I'm kind of close to being done with him, <laughs> to be honest. He, he needs to do a lot in this second half to kind of convince me at the end of the year to, you know, whether it's worth it. But think about this. So as bad as everything's gone on, they're completely safe already, according to Barry Jackson. Okay, so if they're safe, then are you telling me they didn't make all the decisions? Is that why they can't take all the blame? You know, because you keep telling me, because Peter King just reported also that Stephen Ross is not pushing whatsoever for Deshaun Watson. Okay, but other people report that he loves Deshaun Watson. Mm -hmm. He wants Deshaun Watson. Praying about it. So I'm, I'm wondering what the hell is going on. Did somebody else want to uh, and they had to draft him. Mm -hmm. And then if they said, hey, if he doesn't work out, don't blame us. Mm -hmm. We won't blame you. Because normally, if you whiffed on a quarterback that you draft, think about this, dude. If you're Tua, you're like, wait a minute, hold on a second. You had a draft card. Mm -hmm. At number five, you put my effing name on it. And you've already quit on me? Mm -hmm. well, what's going on here? I don't get this. So you think about this, it's the weirdest thing yeah. because you can almost say that last year they almost acted like he wasn't enough. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And Flo has never, ever come out to say, hey, enough's enough, guys. Yeah, exactly. You know, this is polluting my locker room. This is polluting the fan base. Tua is my quarterback. Mm -hmm. Never comes out with that. Oh, no, Tua's the guy. We believe in him. It's always this. and and. It's just like the offensive coordinator crap. Dude, put an end to it, but you yeah, don't, yeah. and you allow it to fester. So I don't know what to believe now. And that's my problem with this whole situation. And it's a, to it's a total mess. So if somebody else was picking Tua, which I don't think so, but whatever, then this becomes an even bigger disaster. By the way, I just want you to know that the Dolphins and Watson are made for each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, know where, I know where you're going with this one. <laughs> if, if, so if you ever want to look at Jilly Anias, the, the beautiful girlfriend of Deshaun Watson, <laughs> from a 1 to a 10, she's a 13. Okay. Dan Marino I had to use 13 so she's a 13 and yet he cheats on her by going off with 20 other masseuses so I want you all to think about this the Dolphins right now are you know in bed with Tua but they're trying to go to sleep with Watson so you know what both the Dolphins and Watson are serial cheaters and they kind of belong together you know what I'm saying? So this is what's going on. This is what's going on here, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, think about this, dude. Those of you that are that are parents out there, mothers and fathers. So when your son or daughter comes up and says, you know, dad, I want to be an artist. Oh, kid, you couldn't draw a stop sign. Get the hell out of here. Is that what you do with your kids? I'm just wondering.
How about uh, husband and wives? You know, honey, I'm I'm going to go out for that for that. I'm going to ask for that raise and that promotion. Oh, sweetheart, come on. You know, you got your job on looks. Don't do that. They'll fire you. Is that what you do with your spouse? Because that's what we're doing here with Tua. The guy has to go out and bust his ass every week and try to win with a terrible team and terrible coaching. And yet there is nobody supporting that young man. And don't give me this. Oh, your professionalism and you got to compartmentalize. Uh, that's when Aaron Rodgers is telling the Green Bay Packers, dude, you don't get anything for me. Screw you guys. I'm out of here. Mm-hmm. So it's all right in that world. It's not all right in this one. You know what? I, I said it today on the show. I've never had a second favorite football team. Mm-hmm. I either. promise you, wherever Tua goes, that will be my second favorite football team. And I will be rooting for that young man to excel and succeed because he deserves it. And the way he's been treated here is unacceptable. We have not treated him and embraced him like he's supposed to be your franchise quarterback. And they certainly haven't supported him the way they're supposed to responsibly support a franchise quarterback. Well, I think that's the perfect way to end this episode and hit the nail right on the head. Big O, it's always a pleasure. Hopefully one of these weeks <laughs> we can celebrate. This a week, win. man, they're going to crush the bills, baby. Crush the bills. <laughs> we we Phillips will have four sacks. <laughs> No, Igbenogamy will pick up two interceptions. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And Albert Wilson is actually going to put on shorts and catch a touchdown also and everything. Okay. All right. Hopefully. There you go. We're going to paint shorts on his pants. He's going to think he's in <laughs> training camp once again. And he's just, <laughs> as Marina would say, he's going to let it fly. <laughs> Real quick, what would you, you, what'd you think of that? Embrace? I was about to say that. He uh, was, that was uh I this might say I, I, sound I, I, a little I asked this on the show today. Have you ever ever seen Marino give anybody love like that no. on the field? The current player. I'll ever. play the I'll play the clip somewhere so people can see what I'm talking about. No, no. fits, Passion. not Rosen, not Tannehill, Grand is nobody. Yeah, yeah. Nobody's ever gotten that love from Marino. Ever. I want to know what and, he said to him. And, and yeah. And I'm wondering, like, hang in there, kid. I know what you're going through. I know it can't be easy. You're not the problem here. You do you. You be you. Let it fly. You play well. Everything's going to work out for you. That's kind of what I got to feel for, to yeah. be honest with you. That's kind of what I got to feel for with Marino. Uh, but that that was like that that moved me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I've been around Dan for a long time and watching him, covering him as a player, watching him, you know, as uh, as an executive for this team and all that. And he's not an emotional guy no. on the field he was. But once he has left the field, I've never – that's the most emotion I've ever seen him show another football player ever. I wonder so. if it's because of – he had a little bit of that unfairness coming out of college, Marino – with the whole rumors and everything. Oh, yeah, the within. cocaine rumors, partying, all that stuff. So he, he probably bad, knows he what it's like of, to be, you know. He, he, had a, he had a mediocre senior year, too, because he threw a bunch of interceptions. Exactly, exactly. Whatever, you know. He probably knows what it's like to be, you know, scrutinized by the offense, by the media, and by certain people. And Because he, normally you, you walk up to your quarterback, you put your hand on the shoulder, you say, get this one, you know, let it fly, yada, 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 smack on the butt, and you keep it moving. He would grab his face and he was talking to him, put his hands on his shoulder. Again, I'll the video will be up. You guys can see what I'm talking about. I was like, that's a yeah. that's a father talking to his son. Right. Right. Yeah. That was a dude that wanted to say, Hey, I know what you're going through. I understand it. I feel it. But of course, and please don't start with the whole Marino GM. And uh, Marino doesn't want to be a no, GM. No, 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 no. He doesn't want to sit there and scout a hundred guards and a hundred defensive backs. That's he's not, not what John he's going to do, dude. He's happy what he's doing. He enjoys his family. He go, goes golfing, goes in and out of the facility, does whatever the hell he wants. Hey, Dan, come here. Tell us what you think. All right, I'll tell you what to think. Now I'm out of here. Mm-hmm. He loves his life. Leave him alone, by the way. <laughs> if you love Dan, by the way. Like I do, like like most Dolphin fans love Dan Marino. Leave him the F alone, bro. Mm-hmm. Let him be happy and be whatever. He he already did what he was supposed to do for us. 
He already sacrificed for us. The last thing I need to see Dan Marino is go to a thankless job that we end up ripping him for it. Imagine and he doesn't deserve that. Imagine the owner, whoever it is, say they say that Marino comes out and he does say, you know, you know, I want to, I want to dip my toe in the GM circuit. I want to become a GM for the Dolphin. Imagine that owner that needs to fire Dan Marino. Oh my, oh my God. You're done. Like, you're done. You, no. So just, unless unless Dan becomes Michael Jordan. Exactly. Then you can't do anything about it. You know what I mean? And then and then he's got to carry that burden for the rest of his life. Hey, great player, but man, he sucked as a GM. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, Michael Jordan is the greatest player oh, ever, and he's the worst general manager <laughs> ever. Also, I mean, he's the goat on both ends. Yeah. <laughs> Think about that. I know I know Charlotte's actually half decent right now, mm -hmm. but it took him like 27 years to get a half decent team yeah. to get into the playoffs. So he, he's still a terrible, 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 terrible. Did I tell you how terrible Michael Jordan is as a general manager? And that's what I don't want for Dan Marino. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's my problem because more there's a great chance he will suck as a general manager mm -hmm. because that's usually what happens. The Aussie Newsoms and the Jerry Wests of the world, man, those are few and far between. Yeah. You know, hard to find. And by the way, Dolphins, you're not going to hire. Je I get that one, too. Hey, why don't we ask Aussie Newsom to come back? Mm -hmm. Aussie Newsom He's left done. a great organization. He's why is he going to come here? To leave the man alone. He's retired already. He's a double Hall of Famer player and executive. Leave him alone, bro. We got people's lives by giving him this job. <laughs> oh God. Always a pleasure, my dude. If you guys, if guys haven't, I always tell you guys, go check out big O check out Please. his podcast, check out everything. He's got great beat writers on there every day at 10 o'clock. Is it? Yes. 10, 10 AM Eastern big O radio show. You can find it on all platforms and on YouTube, big O radio show. Please subscribe smash that like button hit the notification bell all that good stuff help us uh grow out there and uh we uh everything goes well we'll be at the combine again we'll be at the senior bowl the east west shrine all the stuff that we normally do and we waste our time talking about a draft that we just don't take advantage of yeah <laughs> we love I prospects that chris greer will never draft <laughs> <laughs> i'll see you next week bud right, baby you guys be good fins up hopefully one week uh, we do this show after a win. It's the joke of, of the episode, kind of. But I just... <laughs> I just find it funny that every time we've done... We started this week, too. And the Dolphins have not won since. So hopefully, you know, one of these days we come off a win and we have something to celebrate. But uh, like usual, guys, go over, check Big O. Hit the subscribe button on his channel. Show him some love in his morning videos, morning live streams if you're awake. Uh, he's got a, it's fantastic the stuff he does and the fact that he gives me the time uh, about an hour a week to just sit down with me uh, and hash this stuff out is just it's it's more than enough so go give him support on uh, that guys tomorrow we're going to be breaking down the film it's gonna be good but it's gonna be bad we're gonna really look at the interceptions look at the touchdowns look at the defense uh, and we'll see how that all pans out but other than that guys I'll see you tomorrow but like usual stay classy ends up.